Hey guys, Tex here. Welcome back to this week's watch list where we're going to go over the market. We'll take a look at the sectors to kind of get a granular view of what's going on with the market as we look to navigate it next week. And we'll also take a look at a handful of stocks that might be setting up for some possible trade ideas as we head into next week. As usual, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the like button, leave me a comment below, and uh, let's go ahead and roll the intro and get started with the video. All right, guys, so uh, definitely an interesting uh, day in the market this past week. So obviously, when we're looking at the SPY, the ETF that tracks the S&P 500, it doesn't look good here, right? We had this big gap down. We uh, we gapped below the 50 MA. We gapped into trend. And right now, given the weakness on this close, it certainly looks like the S&P wants to head lower. Now, before we jump into the specific levels, I just want to do a kind of a quick shotgun through the different indices and the sectors so we can get a very quick granular look of what's going on. And it will really help you see those divergences if we just kind of do a shotgun effect through things, right? So here's your S&P. Pay attention to the daily bar and how it closed, where it closed at, and just in general, what it looks like. Does it look like a bearish bar, a bullish bar, a neutral bar? Okay, so here's your S&P 500. We go take a look at the NASDAQ, your QQQs, very tech heavy index inside bar after a big strong bullish day and trading right near all-time high very different picture there look at your Dow we don't look at this index as often because it only has a handful of stocks in there but there's a lot of industrial type of uh, you know consumer staple type names and things like that in there and you obviously see a very different picture here from what we saw in the queues um, and the spy it actually looks closer to the spy but worse I would say you go to IWM which is your small caps and again here you can see that um, it had this failed breakout and it's falling back into range after even failing to test the all-time high. So we put in a lower high on a look above and fail breakout falling right back into range. That certainly doesn't look uh, good for bulls. Uh, we go and start taking a look through your sectors. XLK, your heaviest weighted sector in the index. Of course, it looks very similar to the Qs, very tech heavy weighted index. So those will always look pretty similar, but you get to consumer, um, the, you, I'm sorry, you get to healthcare. This is your second heaviest weighted sector in the index. And to me, obviously it looks uh, like a, a healthy uptrend, right? Things are just consolidating and trending upwards. Nothing really uh, scary uh, about that at all. You go to consumer discretionary and obviously it's had a bit of a pullback, but in the big bigger picture we are where you know we're just consolidating in a broader uptrend right now it's kind of between moving averages but uh, nothing really super scary going on there you go to communications looks very healthy and a uh, you know a nice uptrend just pulling back uh, to your moving averages there you go to your financial sector your fifth heaviest weighted sector in the index and uh oh what's going on here big breaker trend big gap down big move lower look at the volume on this day here huge volume compared to prior days something's going on there that doesn't look good maybe something to do with the fed starting to talk about tapering well financials doesn't like it big sell off there uh and obviously that's uh creating a drag on the index it's the fifth heaviest weighted sector you got your industrials again you're starting to see uh, a decent pullback here significant break below the 50 ma and it certainly looks like it wants to head lower on increasing volume you go to consumer staples typically a defensive sector but interesting to see that we're seeing a significant pull here okay very very significant pull here on increasing volume go to your utilities another one of your typical defensive sectors hasn't really gotten up to its all-time high yet thought we might be trying to break a flag to get up there and nope it turned around and reversed and big down red day again seeing some increasing volume here on recent days Go to your real estate sector, getting towards the lightest weighted sectors in the index. It's obviously been a very hot sector for a while. You can see this you know, big run up here on the weekly chart, on the daily chart, pulling back into the 20 MA. Go to your uh, basic materials, uh, another one of the kind of industrial type uh, sectors here. We have a big drop here, all right? Increasing volume, big sell off coming in there. And uh, didn't mean to click that, but that's your semiconductors. But let's hop over here to the last sector, and this is your energy sector. And uh, this is the lightest weighted sector in the index, so it's going to have the really the least effect in terms of the weight. But obviously, it's been very strong all um, all this year, and so far, seeing a bit of a pullback there as well. So as we hop back over to the spy, what's the theme that we're seeing here? Right, we're seeing that. Uh, you know, the sectors that are uh, tied to the economy reopening, right, um, that have been performing really hot all year while tech has just been lagging more. Um, I would say, you know, there's been less interest in buying tech than there has been in these reopening type of uh, uh, stocks that they're finally starting to pull back, right? And so 
as they're pulling back, tech kind of uh, is being divergent and showing that it wants to, you know, maybe start to find a bid as people maybe start to rotate back into tech. So that's a real possibility. So I would express some caution if that does, uh, you know, remain to be the case, if tech remains strong while all these other sectors are, you know, finally starting to pull back after a big run higher, if money starts flowing into tech and continues flowing into tech, uh, it's going to, you know, it's going to create this push-pull effect in the market. It's going to make the market uh, you know, not want to really have some big correction, right? You'll see pockets of the market that are pulling back as we are now, but tech is so heavily weighted in the index that it can really help to prop things up and it will create that push-pull effect. And then once these other sectors start bottoming out and, and finding a bid, then the market could really start to rally hard from there. So I just want to express a little caution, you know, about just thinking that, you know, the market's fixing to have a big correction and you should be shorting the SPY next week. While, you know, that could very easily happen, it's just I want to express caution because of this divergence we're seeing. If tech continues to remain strong, it's going to be very difficult to get some kind of clean, big sell-off in the market. All right, now anything is possible, guys. Now, when we jump into our charts here, you took a, take a look at SPY, and again, one of the things that I was talking about is that we gapped below the 50 MA. Okay, that's very significant. That's a very important moving averages. A lot of eyeballs are looking at that. Additionally, we have this uptrend line here that goes back to, I believe, October or so of last year, November, something like that of last year. Okay, and this is the first time that we've revisited this uptrend line since that occurred. Uh, and we did manage to close just below that trend line. So that's definitely notable. And when we just look at this chart, on the surface here, it definitely looks like it wants to head lower and the probable target there is gonna be 411.67. That's gonna be this pullback low right there. And that's also where you have this range here where it was providing resistance and this range here where it was providing support. So it just seems like the logical target for SPY on any move lower, certainly on a gap down on Monday and weakness continuing to see a sell off down to 411.67. Uh, if things really get wild, maybe 406.94 would be in the cards. That's the high from this three days of balance right there where we broke out above that. That would probably be most likely or maybe an overshoot into one of these days lows where you have possible pullback support there. There's also an unfilled gap right here between these two days. And there's also a possibility that we come all the way down to the gap, maybe uh, fill the gap and then bounce from there. Now, obviously, that's a long drop in terms of percentages. If we measure that out down to the gap there, you're talking that's about a 5% drop from all time high. To 411, you're looking at about a 3.2% drop, and to 406, you're looking at about, about a 4.3% um, uh, drop. Now, for a true correction, you need a 10% drop, and that's going to bring you down to about here, almost into the 200 MA. Okay, so that would obviously be a significant sell-off, and I'm not saying that that's going to happen next week, but just to give you a sense of you know scale uh, as far as how far the market would have to sell off to see a true correction. Okay, so when we look at the SPY, again, just want to express a little bit of caution. If we continue to see this weakness next week, uh, definitely look for the 411. Um, obviously, I think the key here is that we need to stay below the prior day's low. Um, if we do bounce up and then fail back below it, then that could be a short down to the 411.67, kind of a, a you know a pop you know, a pop up and, and then a fail. Um, but if we get back over that prior day's high right there, that 417.91, where you can see all of this resistance here from that long ranging action we had, that would also get you back above the 50 MA right there. If you see the SPY start moving back above there, you could see some squeeze coming in from any Anyone who shorted on this day looking for the move lower, that's going to be their definite line in the sand, kind of that 418 area. If we start getting back above there, that's where I'd be looking for longs on the SPY. All right, so that's where we're seeing. Um, let's go take a quick look at the cues as we already went through these. But again, just an inside day. Um, any break of the all-time high, if the strength continues in tech, 350 seems like the reasonable target. This was uh, derived from a fib that I drew from this all-time high to the low of this last pullback. Your first extension level, that 172, comes in right there at 350. And then the uh, real important 618 level comes in a little bit higher than that at 359. You can call it about 360. So this would be the upside targets that I'd be looking for on the queues should we see uh, tech continue to be strong and that index uh, manages to rally further. All right, so we made a quick run through the sectors. I think that will about cover that. Let's go ahead and jump into the stocks that we'll be watching for next week. So Apple, this one is going towards that possible uh, tech strength. And we have this downtrend line that comes in from this high back here, have it anchored there. 
I talked about the fact that we might be in the bigger picture forming a possible head and shoulders pattern here. Uh, you know, here's your left shoulder, here's your head, here's your right shoulder. Um, I talked about, you know, Apple might want to come up to this trend and if it fails and comes back down to the bottom of the trend, this is the neckline we'd be watching for a break below that for that pattern to play out. Now, obviously that's a long ways away off and patterns don't always play out. We could just as easily see the opposite happen here and see Apple break out higher. So any break of this trend, I'd probably definitely be looking for some longs. Maybe we could structure some type of uh, call vertical, uh, not to mention, of course, day trades. And the realistic target on that's going to be 138. That 138 actually comes in from a prior all-time high back here. Um, so here's your prior all-time high, provided resistance here. You had this look above and fail here. Couldn't even get up to it here. So any break of that flag, 138 is where I'd be targeting. And then beyond that should be a quick run up to all-time high if it wants to do that move. But obviously the first move, nice pocket to work with there on Apple. I do really love that. So we need to see if Apple can confirm overtrend or not. AMD is another one of your tech names that's starting to perk up, all right? So it just broke above this downtrend here, and I like that it put in this kind of consolidation day holding above that trend. Now, when we look at the uh, the weekly chart here, you can see that it's been trading within this very wide range for some time. So we're sitting right on this flag, but if we can break above this flag, over high, overhead supply is not going to be really that far. You got the the extreme top end of that range coming in uh, right around 90 or so where you have this overhead supply here that brings you up to all time high. So a break of this flag, you know, maybe you're going to be looking for a move up to about here, right? This is going to be the, the top end of that range. But if that can go, if you can start moving into this overhead supply here, then it might want to make a run to all time high. So I did see a lot of call buying coming in on AMD last week. So I think that uh, obviously there's some money that's uh, betting on a move higher here. And I think 90 seems like our most realistic upside target, uh, our first upside target before we possibly look at breaking up for the all-time high run if that strength can continue intact. So just keep that in mind. Taking a look at Amazon, this one may not be ready just yet because it has made a big run higher here. Okay, it's made this big run higher here. You can see that it's it's quite a ways extended from the moving averages. It might want to kind of rest for a little bit before it makes the move, but really what I'm looking at here is this massive range you can see on the weekly chart where Amazon has been trading inside of. If it breaks this, that's going to be a significant macro breakout where we can see prices really, really head higher from there. Uh, using Fibonacci tools, I uh, drew uh, some extensions on here, and I think the realistic upside targets on any break higher, the, well, the ultimate target is going to bring you up to about 4,000. I love that 4,000 whole number, and that brings you right up here to that 618 uh, extension level from the FIB. Now, there is a earnings spike high sitting here, just shy of 36.80. So I think that any break of all-time high, that's going to be your first target right there, about 36.80 area. That would be an ideal target. And then overhead, you've got your 272, and then again, ideal target uh, all the way up at 618. Now, I just again, I just want to express caution because of the fact that it's already made a big run up to all-time high. So what it might want to do is kind of consolidate here for a little bit and then go for the break. Okay, just keep that in mind. Uh, I just think it's unlikely that this is going to keep going without having some type of little consolidation here uh, around all-time high and then a break. That would be the ideal scenario for Amazon to play out. So we'll keep that on watch and see uh, when that might be ready. Taking a look at Caterpillar, this is uh, not one that we trade very often, but again, this is kind of uh, part of that weakness that we're seeing in the industrial sectors and that whole economy reopening trade that's been very, very heated. Look at this big, massive run higher here on your weekly chart, all right? So what we're seeing here is that we did break sig very significantly below that 20 MA on the weekly chart, but I think at some point it's going to be a little overdone and we're going to have to be looking for some type of a bounce play out of this, and I'd probably be structuring some type of a credit spread somewhere probably playing off of the 200 to the 190 area, somewhere right in here, because you've got that 200 moving average down there around 196. You have this prior high here where this is a breakout high where prices broke above that. That's right at that 200 hole number. I've got an alert sitting right there. If we could see one more push down into this 200 area, I'd probably be looking at structuring a vertical spread somewhere down here. 
you know, something like this where you can uh, look for prices to uh, a very high probability retracement uh, with that level being relatively safe in the short term to structure a credit spread that way. So we did get a small bounce on Friday. Obviously, look how extended we are away from our moving averages. So price may not make it down here to the 200. It may just kind of chop sideways for a while and let those moving averages catch up to the price action. Remember, price doesn't have to correct, uh, you know, it doesn't have to correct by price, I should say it can correct by time and by just consolidating sideways. So I think that we'll be probably safe doing a credit spread down here, but ideally we get one more push down to get some good credit and then we'll see what happens. Uh, but that's a trade that I'd be looking for for a possible uh, you know, retracement on this overextended sell-off. Microsoft, again, with the tech names, it's trading right up here near all-time high. So obviously what we're going to be watching here is the all-time high. It's uh, made this run up. It's consolidating sideways. That looks good. If we can see this break over all-time high, we could see an expansion of range here on Microsoft and uh, in a leg higher. It's not one that I trade that often, but maybe we could look at doing some type of an option spread. If that happens, we could just set an alert, excuse me, right up here at all-time high. That way we are alerted if Microsoft breaks, okay? So we go to NVIDIA. Now this one is, again, one of the tech names, but uh, it's made an incredible run up, um, partly on the news of their, uh, I believe the stock split that's coming out. So I haven't even updated my levels on this, but you can see how it uh, it traded nicely into our FIB levels here uh, and then broke uh, over the 618. So the next uh, FIB level is quite a ways away. That's going to be all the way up there at 860. I don't know if it's going to make that run without having some type of a pullback. I only bring this to your attention right now because of the candle that we formed here. So we definitely found some sellers up here closer to 800. So I think that there might be uh, a short on some type of a pullback on this. I would probably be targeting the 710 area here. So maybe we have one little pop up here. We put in a lower high and then we start to come back down. And basically we'd be looking for a break of the, that prior day's low right there to see if we can move inside of this pocket there. So there's possible a uh, short idea there. But again, the stock has been so strong. It, I would just express caution with shorting the name. But I just wanted to give you some type of an idea for a short. If the market is very weak, uh, you know, I think NVIDIA will be a lot easier to short. So something to keep in mind if the market is weak next week. All right, so uh, just a few more here. Let's look at PayPal. Um, what I like about PayPal is that it uh, has started to round back up. You can see that it's uh, a, you know, a little bit shy of its all-time high, but I think that this 286.89 level where we had resistance and support coming in right here, I think that's obviously going to be key. As you can see, that's right where we rejected off on, on Friday. But if we can get above that level, there's not a whole lot in terms of resistance here in this little bit of structure, guys. So if we get above that 286 level, PayPal should have no problem squeezing back up closer to the all-time high. So maybe set an alert right there around 288 and look for uh, PayPal to work its way inside of this pocket. And definitely that will be helped if tech is uh, going to remain strong. RBLX is a relatively new IPO. It's not one. Uh, it's one that I've only traded one time, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because you can see that this uh, big range of uh, demand down here is right where price is coming back down into. So there might be a possible uh, buy point here if you were to like this stock long term or you just wanted to swing trade this stock. You might be able to look at possibly buying here off of the top of all of this uh, previous demand and expect that we would see some type of a bounce maybe up into the 20 MA that bring you up to 90, 94. And I like that uh, for the past few days, it's been holding right here on the 50 MA. So um, if it continues to hold here, this might be a good long to see if you can capture just a little bit of a bounce. Like I said, up into the 20 M8 would be ideal for that one. So that'd be more like a swing trade idea, but something you could look at. Space is another possible idea uh, also for a swing trade. Um, this one has a lot of short interest. You can see that it's uh, had this big reversal here, and so far it is just flagging. Uh, above us, we have an unfilled gap here between 40 and 42. So you can see I have an alert set here just over that high. If we see space start to perk back up and start moving up higher, it could easily start to fill this gap and then maybe even work its way up to 47.20 if we start getting some really good short squeeze on this. So it's got a lot of good short interest on this. So if it starts moving, it could really start to squeeze. And this ha this kind of hammer candle right there looks really fantastic. Again, you can kind of see the flag developing here and boom, that's what I'd be looking for. So real possible um, trade idea there with the uh, added benefit that we might get some short squeeze to see a nice volatile move higher. Okay, so that would be interesting on space. Uh, moving on to Square. 
again with the tech name, Square has worked its way back up here to this 240 level where you can see it's had support and resistance. If we can get above that, I love this pocket right here. Nice size pocket to work with, getting you up into the, well, I'd say 250 would be the first upside target right there. And then you can see where you have prior resistance coming up there around 258. So set an alert there around 241 or so for Square and see if you can work uh, any kind of a trade on inside of that pocket. Uh, just two more to go over. Tesla, this one, uh, you know, again, on Tesla, I kept thinking that it was weak and I uh, really wanted to sell off. And it may still happen, but you have this prior all-time high that goes back here to around 500 or so. And it just keeps chopping here. And so far, it's possibly forming, you know, this, this, bearish, uh, this bearish pattern, right, where you see prices kind of trade like this. And then eventually they break down like that. Again, a pattern is just a pattern. They don't always have to play out, but something to keep in mind that could still play out. Now, if it continues to hold, you know, obviously we we have the possibility of seeing some short squeeze with this 635 going um, because you do have this downtrend line here where Tesla might want to come up and test. Now, the problem is it's not the cleanest, guys. You do have the 50 MA sitting right there in the middle of that pocket, which could provide overhead supply for any type of a move. Um, so on this one, I would just express caution because, uh, if you try to take this long, it's not the cleanest, but if you do, this is what you're going to be looking for. You want to look for a test of that downtrend. And again, if we see Tesla fall apart and start to break down, uh, below this, uh, developing trend here, there's real possibility to the downside, 571, 539, and then 502. Those are going to be your support levels to the downside that I'd be looking for. Uh, the last one here is Twillow. This is not a name that I have ever traded, but again, I love what we're seeing here. We have this beautiful flag pattern anchored off of all-time high, and we broke trend this past trading day. Okay, So obviously what we'd want to see here, maybe we get a bit of a consolidation day where we pull back and we hold the trend, and then we go for a break. That would be the best ideal scenario. Scenario. Upside targets would be 388 and 404. I was playing around with some possible structures for this trade uh, in terms of options. Uh, if I do take that, I'll make sure and post it in the chat room so you guys can uh, follow along and see how that trade uh, how that trade works out. So that's your watch list for this coming week, guys. As I said, there was a lot to cover. Uh, just be aware that there's probably going to be some of this push pull in the market if you have these other sectors continuing to remain weak uh, and uh, tech continuing to remain strong. Otherwise, if tech gives out and starts to sell off and you have these other sectors starting to sell off, that could be that could really kind of trigger the start of a significant pullback in the market. So do keep an open mind, but uh, don't go into you know next Monday just 100% bearish on everything. Just be aware that there could be that divergence that we continue to see. All right, guys, so as usual, I really appreciate you watching the video. Hope you're doing really well. Let's have a great and green week of trading, and uh, we will see you guys in the next video.